Hey everybody and welcome to Libromancy, a podcast about the magic of books. Today I'm talking about Into the Drowning Deep by Meyer Grant. This book is great. I just wanted to say that first and foremost. I loved every minute that I was reading this book. It was published in 2017 by Orbit. And I just gotta say that was a really good decision for them. The, it was a very gripping read most of the time. I had a really tough time putting it down even when I wanted to. And I think part and most of what that makes it makes it so good as a book is the characters in it. They're very they feel very real and alive. Nobody has the same motivation as somebody else, just like nobody in real life has the same motivation as other people. You know, all their all their decisions were rational based on the circumstances they were in. I thought it was very good. The science of the book is very realistic and real. Very telling that Meyer Grant put a lot of work into making this book. Um, And the science really did not, it never pulled me out of the story. It was never something so egregious that I thought, oh, that's weird or odd or how, why did they do that? And so, you know, I never actually lost myself, found myself getting pulled out of the story. So uh, let's start with the the actual story of the book. Um, We're going to have some light spoilers here in the beginning, and I will try to remember to say when we're going to get into the bigger and better spoilers, so stick with me here. Uh, seven years ago, the Atragatis, a ship, set off on a voyage to the Mariana Trench to film a mockumentary bringing to life ancient sea creatures of legend. So a film company, Imagine, has sent a ship off to do this mockumentary. Unfortunately, it was lost at sea with all hands. Some people call it a hoax. Some people say it's a tragedy and it was all real. Nobody knows for sure. All they do know is that some footage that was supposedly captured on the ship had been leaked to the public, showing the crew being killed by what appeared to be mermaids. That's where the hoax comes in. Uh, it seemed, it seemed like a stunt that a studio would would pull in order to increase their ratings, but... That's kind of our start for the story. So and we're going to start with our main character here, Victoria. Um, starts off with Tori being let go from her whale watching job because of her great habit of lecturing the passengers that they need to feel bad for all the animals in the ocean. Um, after she's let go, she is approached by Theo Blackwell, the right-hand man of Imagine, the company who sent off the first ship, the Atragatis. And he wants to, her to join a crew in search of what really happened to the Atragatis. They're going to go back to the Mariana Trench. They're going to find the truth, whatever it could have been, whatever it could be. And then they're going to come home, hopefully. Yeah. Theo, uh, Theo Blackwell, the head, or the right-hand man of Imagine, is quick to recruit a couple other people that we meet right away. Uh, Lewis, who is Tori's lab partner. And Dr. Jillian Toth and others that we're going to meet later. Um, so they set sail, and the ship they set sail on is called the Melozine. And pretty quickly, we are introduced to several new characters. Uh, first up, we meet Holly and Heather. They are deaf twins. Um, Heather drives a submersible, and Holly does data analysis on anything. She retrieves anything in a lot of different studies and fields. Basically everything under the sea, she can analyze, can do an analysis on it. They've also come with their older sister Haley, who can hear. Um, and luckily, that's all the H names because it was confusing enough. Just the three of them. One of the things I really liked about the twins um, is that even though they're deaf, my grant does such a good job of, you know, looking at all the limitations and what actually needs to change in order for them to be able to do what they need to do. For example, they have lights in their room. Instead of having like a doorbell or ringer, they have the lights flicker. And her submersible, Heather's submersible, is set to use different types of lights for different kinds of alerts instead of the usual speech that we would associate with that. Um, They're great. I love them throughout the whole book. Next, we're going to meet Olivia and Ray. They are Imagine's 
Company Imagine's reporter and cameraman. They are great. Uh, two people. I love them throughout the book. Olivia, she has a lot of anxiety and a lot of you know, kind of those mental issues, but she deals with it very well. It's handled extremely appropriately, I believe. It even talks about how Olivia, one of the ways she's even able to get behind a camera was because having the layer of, oh, I'm just talking to a camera, not a person, you know, is one step that helps her feel normal or feel like she can deal with it. Dr. Jillian Toth is another scientist that we meet. She's been a believer of the mermaids since the footage was leaked of the Atergardus. However, she's the only one who really believes that the mermaids are out there and that we one shouldn't be going out there and that if we do, they are going to kill us. After being introduced to my favorite characters from the series, we're introduced to some of my less favorite crew members. First off, we have the Hunters, Jacques and Michi. They are poachers who have been hired on for protection, uh, along with the rest of the guards on the boat, just in case they do actually find mermaids, and in case they do try to kill them. We meet uh, Jason, Tori's ex. Not a cool dude. Little spoiler, he dies quick, so you don't have to worry too much about him. And then, of course, lots and lots of random scientists. We see things from the captain's point of view a couple times, but nothing overly exciting there. So now we're going to get into a little bit of more heavy spoilers, so be prepared for that. But like I said, it was a good book, so you should be excited to hear all about it. While on their way to the Mariana Trench, scientists are you know busy taking samples, pursuing all of their research, and everything seems to be going smoothly. Unknown to the crew, however... All of the safety features on the ship that they were told about and promised don't work and are being fixed, but there's no guarantee that they're going to be working by the time they get to the Mariana Trench. So they arrive at the Mariana Trench and things start going wrong. And I'm not going to spoil who dies yet. That comes a little later. But the mermaids are real. They start attacking the boat. People are dying left and right. Many, I mean, there's just any number of reasons that you could die, whether the mermaids catch you and kill you or throw you off or you get cut by a mermaid and then you die from their poison. Lots of uh, different ways. They do manage to capture one mermaid in a tank and through some sign language, thanks to Holly and a dolphin trainer. They managed to start communicating with it in a very, very basic way. Destruction and death are looking pretty close to the ship. Everything's getting worse. There's fewer and fewer people every day. Until Tori discovers some very important information, which is, enables her to help save everybody on the ship, which isn't that many people. All right, now I'm going to get into the notable deaths, and my feelings about them, because I can. And that's one of the main things that happens in this book, is everybody dies. Now, Heather, one of the deaf twins that I was talking about earlier, does die. It was sad. I hated every minute of it. I did not expect to be so thoroughly attached to the these characters so quickly. I think she's only in... A chapter or two, maybe three, before she goes down in her submersible, uh, sees the, the, the mermaids for the first time, and then they attack her ship, her submersible and break it, killing her. That was just shocking. That was the first death that we experienced, and one of our main characters right up there. Very surprising. She didn't pull a punch, and it worked, you know? I knew everybody could die after that. Another notable death is Ray, uh, Olivia's cameraman. I didn't expect it. I didn't really like it, but I didn't. He doesn't play as major of a role, so it, I was not as heavily invested in his death. But he's tipped right over the side or pulled right over the side. And Ryan, the ex boyfriend, I'm glad he died. I love the method after capturing or after killing one of the mermaids. They are performing an autopsy on it, and 
Jason secretly kind of combs through the mermaid's hair to try and pull off any crustaceans or, you know, microscopic animals that could be used and he can further his own research slash, you know, get something named for him. He takes it back to his room. He's working with it. He accidentally pricks himself with one of them and bleeds out and dies horribly. I just like that he was kind of a jerk the whole time. It really funny part with that. Jason's boss ends up dying the exact same way that Jason does. It was just great. Like, like and like. They both resort to underhanded methods to try and further their research, and they both ended up paying the price for it. Now, all the random scientists that died, eh, you know, could take it or leave it. I, I know why they were in there. It really, showing the death every so often really kept it fresh and very gripping. The captain dies, of course, should have called it. You know, he really should have gotten those safety precautions fixed sooner rather than pushing forward to it. Now, I did mention that there was a dolphin trainer on the boat. And lest you think I forget, the dolphins are also here. They were brought on as scouts. They were very well trained. You know, they go out, they kind of bring back, they can answer simple yes, no questions, get a feel for like, oh, are there mermaids? Where are they? Kind of a thing. It was really good. I thought at least one of the dolphins would survive, would just like fly, you know, fly, swim as fast as it could to get away. Unfortunately, none of them do. They last all of 15 minutes after being let out of the tank that they're in on the, on the melusine. They go down quick. I did not like that as much. It's not fun to see animals die, but it worked for the story. It was really good. Uh, Jacques and Michi the hunter, I knew they were going to die from the beginning, and I wasn't disappointed. I did not expect the way that they would die, though. Michi, the wife, is the first of the hunters to go after patrolling the deck and eliminating quite a few mermaids she is hit with a ricochet bullet that went through one of the mermaids though they rush her to the on-site you know medical emergency ward after so long there's just nothing they can do her cells are deteriorating faster than they can put more in her so she dies of course after she dies Jacques goes out in his blaze of glory just going out there to kill as many as he can. I, unlike you, I sometimes enjoy a good blaze of glory death, but it really wasn't that glorious. He walked, he'd shoot, he didn't really check any other rooms or like be like methodical, I'm gonna kill every single one I find. It was more like, I'm just gonna walk around and shoot. And then he swarmed and dies. Of course, not that glorious. But now that we've talked about everybody who's dying in the book, let's talk about some of the people that we know are surviving, if you've kept track. We have, first we have Dr. Toth. She was great, She's focused on the science, had preparations because she knew that the mermaids were going to try and kill her and kill everybody. Very prepped for that. It was good. I'm glad she survived. Our main character, Victoria, of course, survives. There were, however, several scenes that I thought she was going to die but didn't. Um, appreciated the fact that she does. She has a, a little romance with somebody on the crew. I thought it was well played out and not rushed and not like, oh, we're all going to die, so let's just get together. There was, I felt again, it felt real to me. Um, I love her discovery at the end that ends up saving the ship, that the mermaids are not as our stories would tell them obviously, but they're not uh, all the same. Uh, in fact, the mermaid species is more like anglerfish, where the males are much, much smaller than the females. And so the female is a giant behemoth of a mer, mer person, kind of like a big anglerfish, and it would come up and attack. So that's why the males are working so hard to give her enough food, because the female is the dominant one. Another survivor is Lewis, her lab partner. Great throughout the whole book. 
very dependable. You really get the feeling that if you were in this story, you would be Lewis. Let's lock the door. Let's not leave. Wait, why do you want to go outside where the killer mermaids are? I think that's a bad idea. Let's not do that. Um, so good. Just great. Loved him throughout the whole book. The, the sisters who survive of Heather, Holly, and Haley. I'm glad they made it through. Very, I thought, accurate descriptions of their grief. Just the, uh, the anger that you can feel at losing someone. The pain. Just throwing yourself into your work and kind of ignoring everybody else, which actually leads to Holly's survival because she doesn't leave with the rest of the scientists and therefore get caught by the mermaids. Um, Haley is our, she's the, she is able to communicate with a mermaid just again through very rudimentary sign language and after a lot of trial and error. So, you know, she survives uh, mainly because of that, because she started to communicate with them. Olivia, she also survives our reporter, one half of our reporter team. She's great. She makes a lot of good calls. You know, like I said, just they're all so realistic and so personable that you can't help but say, yeah, this is what a, a real person would do in this situation. Also, we have Theo, Imagine's director and in charge of the ship, the true in charge of the ship, of course. Uh, he's always so practical and trying to, you know, survive and just get his job done. That's what he was devoted to, is fulfilling the purpose of the trip, which, as you learn, is to capture a mermaid. The ending at the book uh, is hilarious with him when they're being rescued because he's been tricked into eating some pot cookies and he is high at the end. Uh, it was so funny, I was laughing, even though everybody else had died. So, it was a really good book. I can't say how much I liked it. It's just too much. You should read it. It was went quick because, like I said, it's really tough to put down. Um, but that's going to wrap up my discussion of Into the Drowning Deep from Myra Grant. Thanks for listening, and thanks to David Hillowitz for the music. If you have any questions or comments, send them to libromancypod at gmail.com. And remember to keep reading. <laughs>